Let's take a look at using Microsoft Excel to conduct a hypothesis test for P. All right. We have here an exercise from your homework. And in it, we have a poll. 791 adults were asked to identify their favorite seat when they fly. And 484 of them chose the window seat. All right. We would like to use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the majority of adults prefer window seats when they fly. The claim, the claim is that the majority of adults prefer window seats. The claim is H1, right? It's the statement that we're providing evidence for. So H1 would be that more than 50%, a majority, right? More than 50% or a proportion greater than 0.5 of adults prefer the window seat. That's this right here, right? And then our null hypothesis is a statement of equality. So this guy, right, represents our hypothesis pair for this test. Now the next thing we need is a sample proportion, or a p-hat, so that we can actually look at the likelihood of our sample. Our sample proportion, p-hat, is always given as a proportion of x, or the number of individuals in the sample that possess the given characteristic, over n, the sample size, right? So in particular, in this case, it would be 484. 484 individuals preferred the window seat when compared to the sample size of 791 adults. So my p-hat, as we just saw, is 484 divided by 791, or 0.612 approximately. Next, we need to calculate a test statistic, okay, or a z-score for our p-hat. Recall that in the case of a proportion, our test statistic is given by p hat minus p divided by the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. Let's go ahead and calculate that for our particular test. We'll say equals. I'm going to go ahead and throw my numerator in parentheses, right, because we need to calculate the difference before we divide. So p hat minus p. p was 0 0.5 in this case, right? That's the assumed true population proportion divided by the square root of the square root of p times 1 minus p, p was 0 0.5, times 1 minus p, which is, of course, 0 0.5 in this case, right? If you did that in your head, that's perfectly acceptable. And then we divide that by the size of the sample, which was 791. Let's go ahead and execute that. And we see a test statistic of 6.29. That tells me quite a bit right off the bat. Remember, the point of getting a test statistic is so that we can consider the likelihood of seeing the particular sample that we saw under the assumption that H0 is true. So this problem, right, assuming that half of people prefer the window seat, what's the likelihood of getting a sample where 61% of people preferred the window seat if H0 is actually true? Well, this test statistic is extremely high, right? There, in the standard normal curve, there is essentially zero area right of 6.29, which means the likelihood of seeing this sample if H0 were actually true is essentially zero. Let's go ahead and reinforce that statement I just made. And let me remind you that the p-value is the probability of seeing a sample proportion greater than the one that I saw in my sample. This is equivalent to asking what's the probability of getting a z-score greater than 6.29, or what's the area right of 6.29 in the standard normal table. So let's go ahead and calculate that real quick. All right, if we want area to the right, I want to do equals 1 minus, and then I'm going to call norm.dist. Right? We want 6.29. 6.29, or remember, I could, if I wanted to, I could just grab my test statistic area to the right of this, right? So we're doing 1 minus. But norm.dist is going to be going to give me area left of 6.29, hence the 1 minus, right? So with a mean, mean of 0, and a standard deviation of 1 now, right? Because I got a z-score. So we're working in the standard normal. And I want cumulative area, so I choose true. Recall what you're seeing here is floating point notation, right? It might look big at first, but remember, this is actually saying 
right? 1.55298 times 10 to the negative 10th, which it means it's 0 0.9 zeros, then you're 155. That's how little area falls right of 6.29 in the standard normal table. So this is approximately 0. With your p-value being this small, right, you're essentially saying that this sample was essentially impossible if it were not true that a majority of people prefer the window seat. You would have rejected H0 with nearly any level of alpha in this, uh, in this particular case. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and calculate a critical value for you so that you see a test in terms of the classical approach as well. Let's reiterate these results with a different style of test. Okay, so the critical value in this case for alpha equals 0.05 on a right-tailed test would be the 95th percentile, or the z value for which 0 0.95 of the area falls left of it. So, and I'm saying that because remember, norm inverse, all right, it's going to give us a z value such, such that the area falls left of uh, the value we're looking for. So the probability would be 0 0.95 in this case. 95% of the area falls left with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Okay. So the critical value in this case would have been 1.645. Right? So the only way we would have failed to reject H0 is if my test statistic were smaller than this. But obviously my test statistic is much greater than this, so that means my sample was very extreme, so I reject H0. So the gist of the whole thing is that there is significant evidence that a majority of adults prefer the window seat when they fly.